Hey guys, welcome back to Take 10 for our eighth lesson. My name is Maddie, and I'm so happy to be here with you guys today. So, I don't know how you guys are feeling right now, but lately my life has been kind of crazy. So I thought we could just start by taking a minute to kind of just relax and start fresh. So I'm gonna have you guys kind of get situated, put your feet flat on the floor, hands in your lap, and then I want you just to close your eyes and take a really deep breath and then let it all out. And when you do that, I want you to think about letting out all of your stresses, anxieties, anything like that. All right, ready? Okay, thanks for doing that with me. And with that, let's get started. Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about chapter five, effective communication. So just like before, I have a little bit of an icebreaker question for you. And today our question is, what is your favorite TV show and why? So I'm gonna have you guys go ahead, pause the video here, share your answers with your neighbor, and then come back after you guys have had a minute or two to discuss. Okay, so my favorite TV show is Friends. I like it because it's a nice short show. It's only about 25 minutes per episode, which is a good amount of time for me. It's a nice length of time to just take a break from whatever I'm doing. Um, and it's funny, it makes me laugh, it's lighthearted, and it's usually a break from whatever's stressing me out. So that's why I like Friends. Okay, so just like before, we're gonna do a quick review. And our review question for today is, what strategies can we use to respond to our anger triggers and de-escalate the conflict? So I'm gonna have you guys go ahead and pause the video here and see if as a class you can come up with some ideas in response to this question. Okay, so strategies we can use to respond to anger triggers and de-escalate a conflict are, talk it out, walk it out, wait it out. So these are our official Take 10 slogan. Um, we say you can talk about it, communicate with the person you're having conflict with. Um, you can walk away, give yourself some space, time to calm down, and you can wait it out. Give yourself time to think about it and decide how you want to respond before doing so. So hopefully you guys remembered these and maybe even came up with some other thoughts of your own. I know last time we talked about going on a run, reading a book, listening to music, stuff like that. So hopefully you guys remembered some and maybe even came up with some new ideas. All right, so now on to our topic for today. What is communication? This is the first big question I want you guys to think about. So I just want you guys to think in your head, what is communication? What is its definition? What does it look like? What are examples of communication? So just kind of take a few seconds and think about that. So, communication is the act of conveying meaning from one group to another using mutually understood signs and symbols. So communication is just a way that you convey meaning, you convey a message. So it can look like text messaging, um, sign language. What I'm doing right now is communicating with you in this video, conversation. Those are all examples of communication. All right. So hopefully you guys thought of some of that stuff too. So now we're gonna talk about elements of communication. So this little graph here kind of shows you a nice breakdown of what makes up communication. And you might be surprised to see that communication is actually only 7% the words you say. It is 38% your voice and tone and 55% body language. So let's take a little bit more closer look at that and see what we think that means. So when I say that communication is 38% tone, how does tone affect your communication? How do you think tone matters? So if I would say something like, that's great, you did a good job, versus that's great, you did a good job. Do you see how that's different? The first one, my tone seemed very positive and genuine. The second one, it was a little bit skeptical and kind of seemed like I was being sarcastic, that you weren't actually doing a great job. 
and then body language. This one, um, I think you guys probably can get a pretty good understanding of how body language matters. But if I'm leaning towards you and I'm making eye contact and I look like I'm paying attention, maybe even using hand gestures to illustrate, that is good communication and showing that I'm interested, I'm invested in the conversation. Versus if I'm doing something like this or like this, those are both things that make it clear that I'm really not invested in our communication. So, I just want you guys to think about that when you are communicating, um, that it's not just the words you say. The words you say matter, but there's also a lot more that goes into it too. So try and keep in mind your tone and your body language when you're communicating. And that's another reason why social media and texting like that, um, things like that, can be very difficult because you don't have the tone and you don't have body language. So all you get are the spoken words or texted words if you want to think of it that way. And so sometimes, well, we're really missing a lot of the um, critical key information that we usually use when we're processing uh, communication. So texting, you just have to be a little bit more careful about the words you say. Okay, so hearing versus listening. What is the difference between these two words? Is there a difference? Um, I'm gonna have you guys take a minute and pause the video here and discuss that in small groups. Do you think there's a difference between hearing and listening? And if so, what is it? Okay, so hearing versus listening. They are different, and we're gonna go ahead and talk about how they're different now. So hearing is a process, a function, or a power of perceiving sound. It's physiological. Hearing is just sound waves coming into your ear, striking your eardrum, and being transmitted to your brain. And then your brain makes sense of them and figures out what is this sound that I'm hearing. Listening, on the other hand, requires you to pay attention to sound. You have to hear something with thoughtful attention and give consideration. You're processing, you're um, involved. So listening is much more than just hearing. Like right now, I am hearing birds in the background and um, I can hear my air conditioner running but I'm not really listening to those things. I'm not focusing my attention on them. So hopefully that makes sense. So what are good communication skills? When you're communicating with someone, you don't just want to hear the words you, they say. You want to actively listen. Just be, also, you would want someone to actively listen to you. So good communication skills. I'm gonna have you guys pause the video here and hopefully you can brainstorm a list on the board or something like that um, of some good communication skills. So go ahead and do that as a class and then come back when you're done. All right, so good communication skills. We're gonna say that you should concentrate on what is being said. When someone's talking to you, you shouldn't be thinking in your head, what am I gonna have for dinner tonight? Or what should I do after school? You should be focusing on the words they're saying because you also hope that they will focus on the words you're saying when it's your turn to speak. I'll say don't send nonverbal messages that you aren't paying attention. So what are these nonverbal messages? Well, if you're talking to me and I'm just looking at my nails or I'm playing with my hair um, or just really not making eye contact with you, not looking like I'm paying attention, those are nonverbal messages. And they're going to tell you that I don't really care what you're saying and that's not a good communication skill. So we'll also say don't interrupt someone, even if you don't agree. Let them have a chance to express their opinion and then you will also get that chance after they're done. Also say listen for keywords and ask questions. Um, asking questions is a really good way to show you're invested in a conversation and it makes the other person feel good. And also you'll feel more involved too and you'll have a better understanding of what is being said. So those are some good communication skills. You guys might have come up with some more too though and I'm sure that they are all great examples. So my next question for you is how can we use communication in conflict? So I just want you guys to take a minute and think about that in your head. How can we use communication in conflict? Why does communication matter when we're in a conflict? How can we use communication effectively? All right, so we're gonna talk about two different types of statements. The first of these is you statements. You statements are accusatory and they cause people to shut down their emotions and become defensive. 
So an example of a you statement is, you make me so angry when you pick your other friends over me. You don't even care about me. So if someone said that to you, say one of your close friends came up and said that sentence to you, how would you feel? You statements place blame. They say, it's your fault. You make me angry. And when you, someone places blame on you, often you're gonna feel defensive and you'll shut down. And that kind of ends the conversation and can even escalate the conflict. So you statements are not an ideal way to use communication and conflict effectively. Instead, we're gonna talk about I statements. I statements communicate feelings and conflict by talking about how you are feeling. They inform the listener about your feelings and thoughts without making them become defensive. So an example of an I statement is, I feel hurt when you eat lunch with Jack because I think it means you like him more than you like me. So that statement emphasizes how I'm feeling. It doesn't say, you make me mad when you do this. It says, I feel angry when you do this because and then you explain why. So it's focusing on yourself. It's not placing blame, and it's just a better way to communicate your feelings without making anyone become defensive. And if you can avoid making the other person become defensive, they're more likely to listen to you, and you'll be able to communicate more efficiently. All right, so I have this little video that just kind of shows you the difference between you and I statements. So I'll go ahead and play that now. If you guys could listen, that would be great. What are you doing? Excuse me? You haven't done anything on this project. I've been working my butt off on it. So... So the problem is, is that if you don't do anything, you're going to cause both of us to fail. I'm going to cause... Yes, you are going to cause... You're going to cause us to fail. Because I've been working my butt off. You haven't done anything. Whatever, man. What am I going to do now? Hey, Darren. How's it going? Hey, bud. I'm doing all right. How are you? Can I have a Yeah, go for it. Hey, you know, we've been doing this project for a while, and uh, I've been really working pretty hard on it, and I just, I've been having a little bit of trouble because um, it, it doesn't seem like we're really working together all that much on it. No, I, I definitely feel you, and I just totally remember that um, deadline's this Friday. It is, and I mean, like, it, the thing is that we, I think we really got to figure out some time and uh, work together and get this project done, or else we're not going to do all that well. I agree with you, and my part has definitely not been up to par or as done as it should be and uh it's my fault i i, I totally realized that yeah, i just no worries man i mean i've just been dealing with a lot of personal things um literally I'm, I'm just gonna i just wanted to relax i'll put this up i'll get i'll get to work tonight okay okay and um i've been working on this thing so i kind of know what we're doing so if uh, you've got any questions just yeah let me know. i'll definitely shoot you a text all right cool yep have a good one man see you bro. all right so Um, so hopefully you could see how that was an example of the you versus I statement. The first one was very clearly a you statement. Blame was placed on Derek. It's your fault. We're going to fail. You haven't been doing anything. And Derek got very defensive and it escalated into an argument. On the other hand, the second example used I statements. He said, I feel like I've been doing a lot of work and it's kind of upsetting me that I that you haven't been. And that way, the two men were able to communicate and talk about how each of them felt, and they were able to work towards resolving their conflict. So hopefully that makes sense, and it kind of shows you guys the difference between the two of them. So the activity for today, first I'm going to have you guys write three different examples of I statements. So I have this template for you. I feel blank when you blank, and then because, and explain why you feel that way. So just on your own, I want you each to come up with three sentences and make up however you feel or however you want to be feeling in your statement is just fine. So if you come up with three of those, that would be wonderful. And then the other part of the activity is I'm gonna have you guys split up into groups of two or three. And then each group is gonna come up with an example of good communication and one example of bad communication. And then act out your examples of communication for the whole class. Any questions? Hopefully that all made sense. So three examples of I statements, and then in groups come up with an example of good communication and an example of bad communication, and act it out. And remember kind of the key things we talked about, some examples of good communication being, and bad communication. All right, 
So then, for next time, we're actually not going to have a new lesson. We're going to be playing Jeopardy as a way to review chapters one through five. So what I need you guys to do is to remember definitions and examples of some of these key terms I have on the side. So conflict, remember we said was a disagreement. Violence was anything that harms yourself, someone else, or a place, or a thing. Values were things that are important and good to us. Principles are our rules or guidelines by which we live our lives, our beliefs about right and wrong. And then we talked about passive behavior as ignoring the conflict, aggressive behavior as responding violently, passive aggressive as appearing passive at first but being discreetly aggressive, and then assertive behavior as standing up for yourself. We talked about escalate to make a conflict worse and de-escalate to calm down and bring yourself back in control so you can kind of reduce the conflict. We talked about anger triggers as things that make you mad, communication as a way of conveying meaning or message to another group through symbols, and then finally we talked about I statements as ways that you can express the way that you are feeling in a conflict so as not to explain. These are just some of the key terms that we've talked about so far. So if you could remember these, I promise you they will be important in our next week's video. All right, so then I'll have you guys go ahead and do that activity from the last slide. And we don't have a Google form today, so just that activity is all we need. Have a great week, guys.